further along than where you want to be or whatever whatever it is so mm -hmm. in powerlifting i'm i'm always like well okay that guy's like five six like so of course he's going to be really good at that lift or whatever yeah That's, i make up excuses you know so i feel better about myself uh, and then the same thing with people being like lean and jacked and you just try to make sense of it. You're like, okay, that guy says he's natural and he looks amazing. But if I'm keeping it in perspective, he's five, seven and he's like 170 if he's lucky. So you're like, nah, no, no big deal. That's but, like my boy, Chris Elkins. I don't know if you like Chris Elkins, mm -hmm. Matt Ogus, Jeff Nippard, even Chris Jones, you know, yeah. you remember Chris mm -hmm. Jones, Beast Mode Jones, yeah. right? Like they're all like five, five to five eight, five, nine, but mm -hmm. they're jacked, yeah. like yacked. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And in pictures, they don't look that way, but they're, yeah. Or even some of these people, you can kind of just be like, well, the guy just has huge arms, you know, and then the rest of them's not, you know, I don't know, the rest of them's not like up to par or whatever, but every once in a while, there's a motherfucker like yourself where you're like, this don't make no sense. This guy is 6'1", 6'2", 240 pounds and lean. It's like, man, that's a combination that's hard for people to wrap their brain around because you usually don't see it. It's a very, very low percentage of the population that is, first of all, single digit body fat, but then also to be walking around with appreciable amount of muscle is another thing that that is very difficult. And I would say like the amount of people that I know uh, that have over 200 pounds of muscle on their frame and that are also lean, uh, I know one person. <laughs> Wait, really? Yep. Who? And it's you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait. Maybe, maybe I guess like Cena. I mean, Cena's always said he was nat natural too, and he got uh, O'Hearn, you know, but I mean, I, I don't know. But, but anyway, regardless of whether someone is or isn't natural, it's still a, it's still an amazing feat to be single digit body fat and to hold that much muscle mass. You know, what's interesting to me. I think, I think part of the reason is is bone density. Because my buddy Sam Okanola, who is the WN, he's he was the WNBF world champion in 2017. And may, I think he was two years, 2017 and 2018. I don't know if you can actually pull him up, Andrew, since Ooh. we're Sam Okanola on on uh, Instagram. He's my height. And when he preps, when you get, first off, he looks crazy. Mm. But when he gets lean, he's like, I think 205. 205 to 210. No um, way. Look, pull him up. No way, dude. You're saying this guy's natural? Pull him up. Okay. He gets drug tested all the time. He's the WNBF world champ. Yeah. But like he's six <sighs> okay, two. If he gets drug tested, okay, but like two, I'm just two ten. Two two oh five, I think, on stage. Fuck. I think actually two hundred to two oh five on stage. Obviously, I know internet people that are like this jacked, but like I just meant like in my day to day life. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. But what I was saying was like I think yeah, he part looks of the amazing, reason that guy. Shit. I think part of the reason why I hold so much weight, it's and that's that's Ryan Doris, aka the Natty Pro. When he gets mm. lean, Ryan also he looks oh disgusting as he's a natural pro also. Um but I think the reason why I hold so much weight is my bone density. Mm -hmm. Because like me and him are the same height, but Sam, like I think he looks crazier than me when I'm at my leanest and I'm I'm like whatever, mm -hmm. even though I'm heavier than mm -hmm. him, he looks crazier as far as his muscle bellies than yeah. me. And I'm holding 20 more pounds. And I think a big part of mm -hmm. that is just my bone density. Or mm -hmm. even look at like, a, I think someone like Jeff Nippert is a good example. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Jeff. A lot of people can like train and they can do a bunch of stuff, but like, there's, and I don't know any other way to describe it, but there's something about some of these kind of bodybuilder people that end up with these kind of bubbly shaped muscles mm -hmm. to where even when they're like, quote unquote, out of shape, which is still amazing shape for them, they're just higher percentage body fat for a while. They still look amazing. Um, our buddy, uh, RP, RP Strength, you know, he, he uh, Mike, Mike Isratel, Mike mm -hmm. Isratel mm -hmm. he ends up uh, kind of falling in that category. I remember just like, two weeks ago he was like oh i'm gonna start leaning out a little bit and in the face and and in pictures of him in a t-shirt he didn't really look like he was in great shape but then you would see him like in a squat or something and his legs looked amazing yeah. and now that he's like two weeks into like just cleaning up his diet a pinch he's already getting like shredded again it's like holy fuck man mm -hmm. these di different people have different capacity i think to be able to you know respond to the training in a certain a certain way and no matter how lean someone gets, they, they're not going to have, uh, they're not going to be able to like alter the genetics. I guess you can only like push it so far.
But there are, you know, I've seen some people who, man, like when they start lifting, they're very unassuming. Like you don't think that there's going to be something there. And then they start lifting for a few years and it's just like they transform mm. and and without taking anything. It's just some oh, yeah. people, it's like some people you can't tell, some people you can tell. Like mm -hmm. you can tell there's something there and some people, they just need to actually train and figure that out. And there there was something there. It's, it's crazy. Like, for example, David Laid. You don't know David Laid? Mm -mm. He's He's... He, I guess in terms of uh, fitness, he's like, uh, comparatively, he's like a Chris, Christian Guzman type in terms of aesthetics. Yeah. But David Laid, people loved him because like he's this long, like he's like 6'3 or whatever. And he's he's not super heavy. He actually deadlifts a crazy amount of weight, mm -hmm. like 6'40, 650 or Damn. whatever, um, sumo. But, you know, he when you look at his early pictures, he's just this skinny kid, this long, skinny <laughs> right. kid or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then he turns into that. Those it's old very, pictures, very of, those old pictures of Bradley Martin, right there, where he was real skinny. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um, so you don't know what you're going to be able to do, but you can kind of like when you on when the you see left, he actually still looks pretty good though, even though he's just like a, a little kid. Mm -hmm. You know, you can he, see the frame there. Yeah, you can. You can see some shoulders, and and he's definitely like, you know, he kind of has abs. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was probably just the way that he was. He probably just maybe just didn't spend a lot of time overeating. You know. Yeah, absolutely. But as far as getting big, it doesn't need to, and that's like that's what we're going to talk about today. Getting big doesn't need to be uncomfortable because mm. a lot of people, like you get messages like this all the time too, but a lot of people are like, yeah, like I'm bulking, but I'm getting too fat and it's uncomfortable and it's just, it's, it's, it's not, it, it really ends up being just a not fun experience because number one, you're seeing the scale go up, which is cool in essence, but most people that are focusing on the scale, um, they end up feeling bad when they're walking around. Walking up flights of stairs is difficult. Their joints don't feel that great. Mm -hmm. um, they get winded in training, right? They don't feel like they can do anything else but eat and lift and maybe sleep, you know? And other things are arduous in life. I feel like if you're, if you're trying to do this, you know, like train and be in the gym, a big part of that isn't just getting big. A big part of that is feeling good. For some people, it's getting more confidence. And if you want to gain confidence, you obviously want to feel good about what you're doing. Yeah, I think a, a good rule of thumb is whether you're trying to lose weight or whether you're trying to gain weight, you should still feel good. And maybe you do have to push things to the point where you're like a little bit uncomfortable, where you're like, hmm, that's, that's quite a bit different than what I'm used to. Uh, and there may be like a little bit of a break-in period. And, and I think that if someone is trying to lose like a lot of weight, uh, you're going to have moments where you just don't feel great because it's so different than what you were doing before. And I would say the same is true if you're trying to gain weight, especially if you never really messed around with gaining weight before. You're going to have moments where it's uncomfortable. But in general, overall, you should feel really fucking good. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're kind of overnourishing your body, um, you should feel really awesome. It shouldn't really feel like you're stuffing yourself all the time. I think Andrew actually pointed out yesterday uh, on something that we recorded where he was saying that the biggest mistake that's made is, is probably people snacking. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that like, you know, while you're in a bulk, you could probably make some room for snacking, but keep in mind, you're taking up valuable real estate for other stuff. And that could be curbing your appetite. And you could say, man, I only eat like twice a day. I'm not even that hungry, but you're not, you know, considering the fact that you have, you know, a Frappuccino or all these other things that you ingest during the day that are calorically dense, that may fill your stomach up. Um, you know, milk, any sort of like milk products are going to kind of linger in your stomach for a while. These things are kind of heavy. And, um, so, you know, there's other things like if you eat like, I don't know, Cheez-Its or chips or whatever, they're highly processed foods. Those things, I, they digest pretty quickly, but you'll probably eat like, you're not just going to eat like two or three of them. You're probably going to eat a pretty good amount of them. Mm -hmm. And they are going to take up real estate for food that otherwise could be going towards your gains. Those kinds of foods, in general, I would just kind of view them as like they're, they might add your, to your calories at the end of the day, which might be the goal at the end of the day. But I would say get everything in that you're supposed to get in during the day. And if you want to end the night with a little bit of ice cream or something like that, that to me is kind of the fun of bulking. Mm. But on the flip side of all of it, I would also say like, you shouldn't really be gaining weight very fast. It should be a very, very slow process and maybe, maybe gaining like, two pounds a month or something, you know, really, really try to minimize the damage. Cause if you're trying to gain, if you gain five, six pounds, um, per month, you're going to feel sluggish real quick. 
Yeah. It's not possible to <clears throat> gain five pounds a month of it just being purely muscle. If you're seeing that much scale weight, and I think that's one of the big mistakes. It's like, number one, I understand the necessity of using the scale to see where your progress is because it's like, you know, let's just let's just say this is in the context of you're someone who's maybe you're skinnier and you're trying to gain weight and gain muscle. Um, if you if you know that you don't necessarily need to see the scale going down because you don't have a lot of body fat, you do want to see that scale going up, but you don't want to see it going up too fast because you're shoveling down a lot of food. And initially, especially when you start, it's encouraging to go from like 170 and next month you're 175. You're like, oh, let's go 175. And the next month you're like 180. You're like, oh, I'm 180. But a lot of that weight that you put on because it, it has just been a lot of body fat and a bit of muscle. And you probably are feeling stronger because you're holding more weight, but that weight isn't going to end up being good in the next three or four months. You're just going to end up having some extra body fat that you won't be happy about. Mm. And then you're going to end up rushing yourself into a cut. You guys want to know something funny? Let's hear it. I have never, uh -oh. ever tried to gain weight or gain muscle. Okay, so what did you do? So yeah, what was your? I mean, I, I guess, I guess, like, I guess uh, there would be things that I implemented into my plan that would assist me with gaining muscle, such as like you know, just eating a good amount of protein and things like that, right? Um, but I just, from the time I was young, I just lifted heavy, you know, and then I had an understanding of. Uh, I remember, actually, I remember going to a power thing. I may have told this story before. Um, I didn't know how to get ready for this powerlifting meet because I was just a kid. Um, my brother, you know, he knew some stuff, but like he wasn't always around to kind of like monitor exactly what I was doing. He might have been away at college or so. I can't re really remember. Mm -hmm. um, or he's just, you know, he's also four years older. So I think he was just cruising around with his friends rather than hanging out with his dorky little brother. <laughs> and so I was getting ready for this competition and I was going to compete at 181. I was like, I don't know, 190 pounds. I, at a young age, I was pretty, pretty big, pretty heavy. So I was like, I might as well just, it, it's like really not that hard to lose just a couple pounds and make that uh, weight class. Just like every rookie uh, wants to be in the lower weight class thinking that you're going to cause more damage there. But, you know, looking back on it, it's pretty silly. You should just stay whatever weight you are. But I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I was like, I like cereal a lot. So I'll just eat a shit ton of that. And I'll just <laughs> have, instead of having whole milk with it, I'll just have like 2% milk or skim milk. <laughs> And so I did that like the whole week and I did lose a little bit of weight, you know, and I, I think I told my brother and my brother's like, why are you doing that? <laughs> he's like, that doesn't make any sense. I was like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You know? And he's like, oh, you probably want to eat like, eat like more protein, you know, eat like more meat. And I was like, what's protein? Like what's meat? You know, I barely knew. And uh, I did have like a Metrex protein shake or something at the time. So I would drink some of those or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, as the competition came closer, it's like the week of, and I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to need like special nutrition for this like day, you know, this day that I'm going to compete, it's going to be a big deal. It's going to be, you know, probably really demanding on my body. So I'll make sure I eat like fruits and vegetables and meat and things like that. As I started like reading magazines and stuff like that. And so I'm all paying attention to it and everything. My weight was good. Um, you know, as I, as the contest was getting closer, it looked like my weight was going to line up on the scale for the, uh, contest. <clears throat> and, um, I was like, I, I kind of overshot, like I was like 177 pounds or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, when I weighed myself in in the morning, I get in the car with my brother. We start driving to the competition and we go and pick up uh, my brother's friend, this guy, Rob Constance, huge black guy, probably about 250, 260, just fucking jacked as all hell. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what's up, boys? He's like, this is going to be the trip of a lifetime. And we're... It's like we're driving to White Plains, New York, which is like an hour away, maybe a little further from where I lived. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he just whips out a big thing of sticky buns. Nice. He's like, this He's like, this is powerlifting. This is how it's done. He's mm -hmm. like, we got to knock these out. And he goes, and I got more where these came from. <laughs> he goes, sitting right here in this bag, so let, we better get to work. And I was like, what the fuck? Wait, what, what's, what exactly are sticky buns? I have an idea, <laughs> but what are sticky buns? Like, uh, like Cinnabons. You know, like a Cinnabon type thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And so I was like, fuck, okay, this is powerlifting. This is amazing. <laughs> and so I ate that on my way to my first powerlifting meet and did pretty well. Still made weight. 
Because I was telling him, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make weight. He's like, ah, don't worry about any of that shit. He's like, it won't matter. He's, <gasps> like, this, he's like, this is what you need. Trust me. He's like, this is the kind of fuel you need for powerlifting. <sighs> if you guys were to see what I was looking at <laughs> on the screen right now. That I remember like the ones that come I want to in... say it's from like Entenmann's. Like the, the packaging ones, like they're just like in a tray. Yeah, like that's what I'm talking just, about. Fuck, those are Ugh. amazing. I think it, I think the name of the company is Entenmann's. Ugh. No idea how to spell it. But these I think these are too fancy. That's just yeah, those are rules. That's bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's commercial. Yeah, it's more like this buns. stuff. Yeah. <sighs> this is a problem. <laughs> you guys can smell Cinnabon right now. Mm -hmm. Y'all know Cinnabon? Oh, Cinnabon, that fucking... Oh, yeah. I can smell it right it's now. It's got like butter on it. Right, the frosting, yeah. Oh, yeah, the combination. Like, good thing we don't. <laughs> good thing we don't ever me mess around with fasting. Yeah. How about for sober October, we don't go to Cinnab Cinnabon. <laughs> we don't go there every day, or we do go there every day. That's actually the challenge: is if we can have a Cinnabon every day. That actually would be interesting challenge. We'd fucking hate it after. It's been so long. Cinnabon <laughs> is so good, bro. It's been. So long. Is this a tear? Oh my god! <laughs> when you when you when you see it at the airport, you're like, "How is that place like? How is it open?" You know, everyone at the airport's like super fat, and you're yeah. just like, "This should not be like a thing." You're no. like, "What the fuck's going on here?" But yeah, the same time you're enthralled by it. You're like, "Oh my god, I need to get some fucking sticky buns." Oh <laughs> and, my god! And it is like it, it's tough because like you, we all love. Cinnabon. Like, yes. We definitely want it, but Ugh. I don't want to stand in that line because I'd be like, <laughs> like, who's judging me right now? Mm -hmm. Not even. I just, ah, it's just been so long. Yeah. You know, it, it's crazy how, um, they weigh like four pounds each. <laughs> they're, they're so, so <laughs> thick, like just dense, man. It's, all right, since we're talking about it, do you, if you were huh. to consume... What if somebody ate the middle of it so, out of it? Uh, so, so Stole let me, it from let me get, oh, I'll no, beat some no. ass so quick. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be hard to have some self-control if someone did that shit. Someone walked by yeah. and they're like, thank you. <laughs> so, I, would, I don't even think I'd have the ability <laughs> to stop myself from just going, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like automatic reflex. <laughs> Well, I guess that answers the question, but like, do you, uh, if you were to consume a Cinnabon, uh -huh. do you start with the outside and unwrap it and keep going? Or are you, you uh, save the middle for are, last. like I was going to say, or are you like a Satanist and you just start biting through it? You save the middle for last. Got to. Eat the what about motherfuckers that try to steal the middle of the pretzel from you too? The twisty part, the really? doughy oh, and perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You got to mm. watch out for those people. Damn, well, mm. Those like salt crystals that, on the outside. Quinn does that to me all the time. She steals oh. that part. Well, that's your daughter. Yeah. That's I fish. know, but I'll still break her arm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to ask you. All right. Andrew and Mark, a Cinnabon. Perfect. Thick. Ready for you. Ready to eat. Your lady is right there. Mm -hmm. Your lady is there. She says, I want the middle. Oh my God! I say you. By the way, you're fasted. Yeah, you're that's fasted, fine. and you haven't eaten anything, and you have been looking forward to this cinnabon. For some reason, there was one left, <laughs> and they want the middle. No, I, I, what do you do? I'm good. I'm good. I say, babe, you can totally have it. That's 100 percent all you. Do not care. That's that's that. What's mine is yours. Yours is mine. Blah blah blah. That's yours. However. <laughs> This isn't gluten free, so if you eat that, <laughs> it's gonna lead to a lot of bad things. So really, psychological if, torment. I like if, it. If I eat it for you, <laughs> it'll help you in the long run. So I, I'll take this one for the team. So that way, you know, this is where it's super helpful <laughs> because I carry around divorce papers with me at all times. So I would just gently slide those across the table. Maybe you can kind of fill that up. There's a prenup there too. Make sure you sign some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were going strong until she took the middle of your fucking cinema. Oh, man. That's some yeah. evil shit right there. You could see that shit in court, too. She's like, hey, she wanted the middle of the Cinnabon? And the judge would be like, oh, shit. Mm, <laughs> I understand. Awarded everything in your name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. That's um, anyway, that was some of my introduction into powerlifting was like, oh, yeah, you can have some of these foods, but. When I was at the gym and when I talked to the older guys, they talked about eating steak and they talked about eating potatoes. And I mean, they literally talked about eating meat and potatoes. They're like, this is like the key to get big. You want meat, potatoes, oatmeal, whole eggs. You know, like they kind of, they at least knew, you know, ha half of the battle. And they were just kind of explaining, like, if you're going to, if you're going to utilize a lot of fuel in here, uh, you're going to need a lot of fuel to, to get these workouts to go in the right direction. 
And then the other thing they taught me was that the more that you weigh, the easier it is to get strong fast. However, you know, you don't want to, like most of these guys were like, they were pretty jacked. Like mm -hmm. they were in good shape. They weren't, I mean, this is a long time ago too. There was less, like there was a, still a lot of shitty food, but there was, it, it was, uh, I don't know, there just, there was less convenience of shitty food. You couldn't just like lay on the couch and just order DoorDash. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it was a different, a different era, a different time, but. Yeah, they kind of taught me the groundwork of like, you're going to need to be bigger, but I never actually consciously really worked on being bigger. I just happened to be a, a pretty big kid. I lifted, I went to the gym, I understood that I needed to like fuel myself, I, but there's never been a time where I'm like, oh, I'm going to bulk up. I've never even tried, I've never even tried to bulk up. My brother and I were talking about it the other day and my brother's like, I've never, I've never once tried to bulk. I was like, we should just try it sometime. See what the fuck would happen because... We're that for us, you know, it's it's more of a, a thing of trying to manage our calories and manage our hunger mm -hmm. and, and those kinds of things. Yeah. So, but when you say that you never tried to to bulk, um, my, the first thing I think about was like when I first started hanging out with you and you were gonna go for the six hundred pound bench. You <laughs> you were a different looking human. Yeah. Oh yeah, that mark was different. And, yeah. So like when I when you say that, I'm like, but I mean, you you definitely yeah, were yeah. in a bit of a bulk right yeah absolutely but it wasn't like it wasn't the the thing that was in the front of my mind the thing that was in the front of my mind was to bench 600 pounds you know yeah it's it's just slightly different language i do understand it's the same fucking thing basically my entire powerlifting career my can kind of look it can be looked at as like a bulk you know because mm -hmm. i did weigh 330 pounds <laughs> but i also learned a lot of great lessons in that you know in, in that uh transition i mean some people will look at some of that and they'll be like, holy fuck, he was really fat. But if you see pictures of me, even with my shirt off, like, I am fat. I have a lot of body fat on me for sure. But I ain't that fat. Like, I'm not, like, sloppy fat. My mm -hmm. face is fat as fuck. I can agree with that. <laughs> um, and I have a belly, you know. I have. I definitely have a belly. But I never got into, like, you know, wearing, like, 4X shirts. And, like, I never got into, like, having things be too crazy. Mm -hmm. um, especially when I was on my way up and that's kind of where I was the most optimal was between like 275 and like 290, even around 290 at times, I sometimes had abs. So it really just kind of, kind of dependent on where I was at in my career. The later part of my career, that's when awesome. I, when I weighed 330, I, I was pretty goddamn big. I like that. I can just Google search fat Mark <laughs> Bell. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but okay. So the things you're saying there, yeah. See, how, like I have a belly there, and I'm, mm -hmm. but like, look at my fucking shoulders and my arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Honestly, you look like my son right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like he's got some pretty good delts. The biceps haven't come in, but the belly's definitely there. Yeah, everything's there. <laughs> but one one thing you said is that you were, and, and you said a key thing, which we're gonna get to. It, without realizing you were performance based mm -hmm. right and that's why powerlifting is good but we actually let, let's talk to you guys about something real quick because as far as performance is concerned we actually partnered with a new company called eight sleep mm -hmm. we've been sleeping on their mattresses yeah. for a few weeks now now eight sleep is freaking awesome because the mattress has a topper that literally cools down you can set the temperature to be cool um and we know that when you sleep on when you sleep in cooler temperatures you actually get better quality sleep mm -hmm. I think you can fall asleep 32% faster. You get really good quality sleep. And I'm someone who many a time in the past wakes up in a puddle of my own sweat. Mm -hmm. I think you know about that too. Fuck yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> I, I always have to start uh, my, my sleeping protocol with a fan blowing directly on me yeah. and not having the blankets on. Um, but with this mattress, you know, it, it's going to get you cool you want your body temperature to kind of come down right as you start to sleep. Andrew Huberman and some other people have been pointing this out. There's a lot of research on this. You're trying to get your body temperature down just a pinch to help you, to soothe you, to help you go to sleep. I think many of the listeners listening to this right now are like, man, I'm hot as fuck. Mm -hmm. The uh, e example uh, or a great thing with the product is that you can utilize it for like one side of the bed yeah. and wh whoever, if you have somebody else sleeping next to you, uh, they don't have to be freezing. You can kind of set your temperature whatever way you'd like. They can set their temperature whatever way they'd like. And you can both be happy in the same in the same mm -hmm. bed without, you know, one person putting freezing cold feet on you or something like that. Let me tell you, and you guys 
probably have experienced this too, but the cool thing about it is that I tell you, I run hot when I sleep. <laughs> I run very hot. So a lot of the time I'd wake up and I have to wash the sheets. But when you're sleeping with another person in your bed, because the mattress is, is cool, you can actually cuddle mm. without mm -hmm. both of you becoming sweaty and then just being like, okay, you know, here, here. Y'all can cuddle and not be sweating. Legitimately, my wife and I noticed that. We're like, because we, we don't ever like sleep together. Like mm -hmm. we sleep in the same bed, but we don't, it's rare. I mean, we, we do here and there, but it's like we, one of us has to be like exhausted or drunk or something <laughs> for us to like fall asleep like perfectly together. You know, it's really, really rare. Uh, but it's been happening more frequently with the eight sleep because it helps with temperature control. Exactly. Yeah. And so like what a lot of people like, I, I remember Stan Efferding talked about like, oh, you want the, the room temperature to be like somewhere in the 60s. 69, 68 degrees. Yeah, 68 degrees. So upper 60s. But your body doesn't need that the entire night. So what, what I found was freaking incredible is like with your sleep cycles and the temperature that you need, it will adjust with you. And I'm just like, dude, this is like the technology and this is freaking, it's, it's really wild how much stuff they have into these, uh, these pod pros. And then also waking up for me has always been a challenge. I'm got, I've gotten a lot better, but now with the kiddo, it's kind of going back to square one where I'm trying to reprogram all these good habits. So it will actually get super hot as at the time that I want to wake up mm -hmm. and then the bed will start vibrating around me to wake me up. So that way it doesn't wake up my wife. It doesn't wake up my, my son who still sleeps in our room. And, um, I'm able to get up and I start my workout and I'm like refreshed and like the app itself has so many different features. Like oh, it, it has like, if you want to wake up to yoga, um, it can like, uh, tell you your, like, vibrate your sleep score and all this other stuff. And like, it really is, um, like I said, like the, the amount of technology. Your heart you, rate. Do, I don't know if you guys have, rate. like, it'll tell you, like, your heart rate during your night, like, your sleeping heart rate throughout the night. I think I had a low heart rate of 44 by 5.15 a.m. Mm -hmm. That rating you on your turn. sexual performance is kind of a downer, though. I was yeah. like, wow, only a four? Really? Yeah, I, dude, thought I, I thought I was like, I scored really high. They're yeah. tough critics. They are yeah. really tough critics. It's just mm -hmm. going to make you better. Yeah. Which I appreciate. They're trying to improve everything <laughs> from yep. your sleep to your sex. Mm -hmm. There you go. So yes, like Insima said, we've partnered up with Eight Sleep and um, it really, really cool offer for you guys. If you go to eightsleep.com slash power project and that's eight sleep. So you spell out eight E I G H T. Is that how you spell eight? I think you nailed it. Eight sleep.com slash power project. Thank you, dude. That's so hard to spell verbally. <laughs> Mm -hmm. For somebody who doesn't know how to spell written, <laughs> uh, head over there right now or uh, links down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. And you guys will receive $150 off your pod pro mattress or your pod pro cover. The, uh, the promo code or promo is um, automatic. You don't have to do anything. You just go to that link and you'll see the $150 off um, your um, you know final purchase and all that good stuff. Again, eight sleep.com slash power project. We are loving these mattresses and, Truth be told, my my air conditioner has has just took a total shit on us, mm. and without our eight sleep pod pro cover, we would not be able to like we would literally have to like move out for a couple of days until yeah. our because that thing has saved our lives. Yeah. Like it literally like I would not be able to sleep without it. So anyway, that's just kind of like a little side note. But yeah, eight sleep, uh, we're ecstatic to be partnered up with them. Do you think you have trouble spelling because you're bi lingual? Uh, because <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People always ask, do you do you think in Spanish or do you think in English? It's like I don't really think. Uh, I uh, honestly, I think it's because I'm dyslexic. Oh, a little bit. You. Yeah. Uh, oh, you guys got to know one more thing about Eight Sleep though, because Mark, like you have an amazing mattress already. Like you all got mm -hmm. some like crazy mattresses, but because the Pod Pro, you can mm -hmm. either just get the cover or mm -hmm. you can get the cover and the mattress. You just use the cover on your mattress because yeah. you dig your mattress. Right. So if you guys already have a mattress that you dig, right, and you don't want to get a mattress, you can also just get the Pod Pro point. cover. And that's the technology behind yeah. the mattress. The, the technology behind the mattress is the cover. You can put on any mattress, king, mm. whatever, <clears throat> you could do that. So that's also an option for you. Yeah, absolutely. Back to our bulking. Mm. What I want to kind of clarify is like, yeah, I was training for performance, but also because I was training for, 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 for performance and because – uh, I didn't really care about the aesthetic side. I guess that's what I meant by I haven't really tried a real bulk. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried like a bulk in a bodybuilding sense. Like there, there was no, I had no regard for like what I looked like really. I, I was just like, uh, let me just get as big and strong as I can. 
And so it was with no regard. Uh, so after doing something like that, I think I could now uh, give good advice on like, yeah, don't do it the way that I was doing it. Because not only did I get fat, but I also had bad habits that are still that 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 are still with me. Like I still have an insatiable appetite. I still want to eat in the middle of the night. Like there's there's a bunch of different things that I still live with from from that, along with, you know, just all the weights I lifted. I fucked myself up pretty good. Um, but I'm still able to do a lot of things that I that I love to do. But in doing that and being kind of careless, you know, looking back, I, I may not have hit the numbers I wanted. So from a powerlifting perspective and from the perspective of me just trying to lift as much as I possibly could, it worked pretty good for that. Uh, but if I'm to think about it in other ways, could I have had it be more optimal? I don't know because I didn't try it that way. But I would love to... I would love to, at some point, do a bulk where the main thing is kind of aesthetics and the main thing is to try to, I guess, uh, transform my body where when I do lean out, I'm leaning out at a bigger body weight. And I think that's most people's goals that, that are listening today. That's most people's goals. And honestly, man, the, the big thing that you mentioned, like from when you were a kid, you're focused on performance, training to help with your performance and powerlifting. And that's the most important thing because when you start training and you're you're training and you're focusing on the scale, it'll cause you to take a lot of bad actions in terms of the amount of food you eat, in terms of maybe how hard you're going in the gym, in terms of the speed at which you're trying to see progress, that you'll rush and you, you won't feel good, you, you're, you're, your cardio will be shitty, you won't be able to walk well, like you'll get so large and you'll feel uncomfortable and you won't actually gain that confidence that you're looking to gain when you started training. You know what I mean? It, what the thing that i wish we had currently was some type of some type of like performance based sport mm -hmm. that individuals could do because a lot of people get into bodybuilding because they want to achieve the bodybuilding style body or body like physique bikini whatever um they they get into that but then that can also lead them to having sp certain types of habits that might not be the healthiest for them in the long run mm -hmm. in terms of like bulking all too like bulking too fast and cutting too fast um, but if you just focus on moving more training volume in the gym slowly gaining weight because if you slowly gain weight you'll get to the body you want right without all of the unnecessary body fat gain and all the discomfort because you're doing things too quickly um, but the performance is what you got to focus on because even nowadays for me i don't focus on the scale and for the past few years i haven't focused on the scale i've just been focused on performing better in the gym for what I'm trying to do. And that led me to getting a better and better and better and better body. The scale, I just look at the number. Okay, that's the number. Cool. No big deal. I'm not doing things for that. But because performance is at the forefront and I'm always looking to improve that, that's why I've been able to make slow muscle gains mm -hmm. these past few years, even after 16 years of training. I think a big mistake that some people make when they're trying to bulk is they leave their conditioning like behind and they don't consider that at all. I know uh, our boy Sully did a, an amazing job did. of getting swole and really strong while he was here. Um, I think something as simple as pull up records, you know, keeping some keeping some information about how you do with a pull up, even if you kind of stink at a pull up, if you gain 10, 15, even 20 pounds, you should still be able to do a couple of them. And so just trying to keep those in, I mean, you can even look at that as like a, a way of like a progressively overloading because you're gaining weight each week, but you should keep a lot of the attributes. You shouldn't be losing a lot of attributes. Um, I have a lot of people that ask me, they're always like, man, you must've lost a lot of strength or you must. And I'm just thinking like, man, like I, that's such a, that's such an interesting question. You know, um, it's almost like, it's almost like asking somebody that all of a sudden became really wealthy and, and you said, man, think about all the things you left behind and coming, becoming rich. You're like, uh, <laughs> that never even crossed my mind. Cause like, I, I, I feel like I've moved on. I feel like I've made progress. And so same thing with, with me. I know it's like, I'm talking right now about losing weight, but I have gained so much access to other things that I was able to do when I was a kid, not everything, but I'm still working towards that. Um, I, I gained a lot of athleticism. I gained strength in some areas. So I might've lost strength on say like a bench press or a squat, but now I can proficiently do pull-ups. You mm -hmm. know, there, there's body weight exercises. I can now run. I couldn't do that before. Mm -hmm. Um, 
there's just a lot of shit that I have access to. So to, to me, that's a form of strength. You know, there's a lot of different forms of strength. So, you know, going go in that direction and, and uh, having people ask the question all the time, like, did you lose strength? It's like, well, yeah, like it, I don't lift the same way. I don't use the same equipment I used to use. I mean, there's a lot of things that I left behind. Mm, I, that, that's the thing though. I totally agree with you on that. And, you know, whether you're, if you're someone who's focused on powerlifting, you're focused on the big three, right? Um, I still think that you can do those things and still feel good. But if you're an individual who just wants to get, you want to get stronger in the gym, obviously, because you want to get bigger. Um, instead of only give yourself more, uh, more variables of performance, because when you have more variables of performance, just because you didn't hit a bench PR, that's not the only thing you're focused on. If you can slowly get better cardiovascular capacity, if you're slowly becoming more mobile because you're doing a little bit of stuff in terms of your mobility, if you're adding in different movements that give you different variables to improve upon, you're not going to be so bummed out that you failed 225 for 10 reps because over here, you're actually getting more mobile in your hips and your body's feeling better and you're moving better and maybe you you the rowing machine or whatever kettlebell thing maybe you did was easier today or you you hit a new little pr on that you know because you improved there mm -hmm. so you're not too focused on oh my deadlift i i missed 500 right for a lot of lifters oh i missed 500 okay they're 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 it messes with them in terms of their training then they start rushing things in terms of strength but if you give yourself different variables of improvement mobility is going to help you feel better it's going to help your body feel better flexibility is going to help your body feel better and over time that will help you be able to continue to gain muscle and strength while feeling good and not feeling like shit. Yeah, I was going to ask, because you, you, you mentioned the scale and, you know, how it's like not the end all be all, but which I agree with, but it is a unit of measure. It is. And if somebody is trying to gain and the scale is not going the right direction, um, right, it, it just can't be ignored. So how can... I guess, how can we utilize that unit of measure without, because I, I understand what you mean. You know, you get on the scale, I feel good, performance is good, so I don't really care. But I guess, how can we still take that input and, you know, help help the uh, the gains, I guess we'll say. So for, in terms of the scale, it's mm -hmm. exactly, number one, it's unit of measure. Number two, you shouldn't allow you, you shouldn't let yourself get too emotionally attached to what you see on it. And that is a very tough thing, especially yes. let's say if you're trying to come down, let's say if you're trying to, you, you know you have a good amount of body fat on you and you are trying to, you still want to gain muscle. So over, obviously you need to see that scale weight go down. So yeah, if the scale's been staying in the same place for six months, right, um, and, and you have a substantial amount of fat to lose, then you need to be in a bit more of a deficit, but you still want to do, be performing well in the gym. But if you're trying to gain, um, I don't think that, you know, because you didn't put on three pounds this month, that's the that's a problem mm -hmm. like you you should pay attention to it so the the it, it's the amount that it goes down and up like for example i want to use use an example because mm -hmm. it's the easiest right now you are how how much do you weigh so, and well this is actually really good um i actually woke up so over the past couple of weeks and then maybe my air conditioner being out is part of it but my diet has not been on point mm -hmm. and I have not been eating enough. Mm -hmm. So over the past, I want to say two and a half weeks, I've actually lost like about four pounds. Yeah. And I've been trying to put more calories down. Again, how much um, do you weigh though? So sorry, I, I was 185. So I went down to like 181. Okay. And then as of today, I'm like 183. Okay. So 183 and change. So again, the scale is gives you a little bit of information. There's mm -hmm. things going on with water, things going on with sodium, um, things maybe going on with the way your nutrition looks. But the, the mm -hmm. big thing to think about is, okay, I have a range of three to four pounds, right? I am trying to gain muscle. How am I doing in the gym? Mm -hmm. That's the bigger thing. Are you substantially weaker in the gym? Is your performance continuing to wane? Are you seeing weak, like, are you not able to do as much volume as you were multiple weeks before mm -hmm. and you're four pounds lighter? D so I, I'm I just mean, saying, like, yeah, that's something that you need to think about yeah. because if your performance is better in the gym, and this is for anybody, if your performance is better in the gym and you're within three to four pounds, whether it's heavier or lighter, mm -hmm. but you're still doing really well in the gym and feeling good as far as your performance, whether you're three or four pounds lighter, that's nothing to really worry that much about mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Focusing on performance, right, is good because that, that weight's going to come back easily. Like you could legit go to some sushi. And you, <laughs> like, you know, you'd see a higher scale number. Of and, course. Like you could see 185 right. or 186. I, yeah, just drink more the day before. Yeah, I guess, and, and you're right. So like last week I, I hit like a, a PR on a certain movement. And so I was pretty fired up. And then this week, 
just again, sorry to complain about my fucking air conditioner, but like I, it's been really like annoying at home. So um, the sleep wasn't as perfect as it should have been because it's like, you know, a lot of a lot of movement going on because it's like, hey, are you still hot? Like, yep, I'm hot. So I actually had to put a fan like on like every corner of my bedroom just to try to get the air to flow. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, without the eight sleep mattress, I wouldn't have gotten any sleep. Yeah. But I and I guess so my question about the scale and all that, it was just reminding me of and we actually just saw a picture of him, our boy Tom Thornton. Because I remember when he was trying to bulk, he would like be putting down everything he could. And he'd get so upset like after a couple of weeks that like, oh, I'm still not gaining where I should be. And I think we all kind of talked to him about it. Like, well, what about like maybe a little bit of a break? Like let your body kind of recoup and stuff. He was very focused on that scale. At least it seemed like it. Maybe he really wasn't because it's just, it's easy to talk about. But and as far as performance, I don't think he really ever had an issue with that. But that's really who I was thinking about is the person that's like, nope, I'm all set. I got a, a meet at the end of the year. I want to gain. I want to get as big as possible. But that scale is not moving. There's mm. just way more to, to take into a, a whatever a, account for than just what that number says. There may be some sacrifices that you got to put on pause for a while. You know, like if you're naturally a thinner person, um, you might have to try to figure out a way to naturally move a little bit less. Maybe you're fidgety. Maybe you love to ride your bike. Maybe you, I mean, people that are thin, I mean, they don't just uh, necessarily under eat. They probably are also uh, moving around quite a bit and that's their body's set point. That's what their body's used to. Um, so you, what makes it hard is you're trying to be something that you're not. You're literally are trying to be something that you're not. You're trying to be, trying to gain weight or you're trying to lose weight and previously you're you're recognizing this as like a uh an area of like conflict you know you're like yeah i have a desire to get bigger i think that this is in my best interest but because because you have that thought like you i guess it's hard to uh say it this way but you wouldn't have that thought if you were already bigger you know and you wouldn't have that thought if you have already lost weight mm. you know you because you would already be there but it would signify if you were big that you already know how to do that. And if you've never done that before, you're doing it now for the first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know this is weird, a little bit. but, <laughs> but it, it's, it's the truth. Like if you knew it was best for you, you would have done it already. Mm. Like the reason why you're not better is, is, is right. the reason why you're stuck. You yeah. know, you, you don't just get to want to be better. You can't wish to be better. You have to, you have to really work at it. And what makes it hard is it's a, it's 24 seven, you know, the battle to lose weight or the battle to gain weight is a uh, constant battle of you uh, trying to resolve conflict in your head of what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. And then you're like, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. You keep saying that to yourself. Oh man, I, I would have been better off if I did this. Mm -hmm. And that's just constantly racing around in your head. It, it's very rare that you go through a whole day no matter what your goal is or how motivated you are, where you're like, I kicked the fucking shit out of today. Mm -hmm. Today was definitely a 10 out of 10, no questions asked. I followed the plan to the exact T. There are people that do that, um, but it's rare. And I, I don't even think that you have to do that in order to make progress. That's actually the good news. Um, but you do have to be pretty on point and you have to do so for a while in order to really notice the changes on the scale and in the mirror that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And one big thing to, to realize is that like, as you're trying to gain, as we're talking about doing this slowly, I think that there's gonna be some people who are like, okay, cool, doing it slowly. That means I'm just gonna, you know, as I do this, I'm gonna just try to hold on to my abs as I'm doing all of this. You'll, you'll let, have to let go of your abs a little bit at a certain point. You gotta yeah. realize that. Like you won't have the most defined six pack the whole time. Right, you, that that's especially because a lot of people aren't used to actually performing there. So the abs might be just there might be a little sheath over it, you know. Not 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 talking about a belly, but you got to be okay with not having abs mm -hmm. all the time because a lot of people want to have abs. A lot, a lot of people want to see them. They want to get leaner so they can or see those covering abs. up veins or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah, but you know, if you want to really be able to gain, you need to find that body fat percentage or that place where you're able to really perform. For a majority of men, it's within the 12 to 16, maybe 17% body fat, which is a decently healthy body. Like mm -hmm. 15, 16% body fat 
is a healthy range. I know that we're lean here. I get it. So uh, I, I get what you guys are looking at, but you got to understand when trying to uh, progress and train, that's a great place to be. You don't want to get though into 18, 20, 22% range. Then you're being gluttonous, Yeah. right? And so just real quick for everybody on the live chat, uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, go ahead and comment and let us know what you struggle with as far as bulking. And then if you guys are catching this as like after the live stream is off, if you guys can comment on the uh, comment section and let us know what you guys struggle with. But what you just explained is what I struggle with the most. Um, you know, having abs was a huge deal for me, you know, did film the whole little series about it. And then now that I'm trying to maintain 185, like I look in the mirror and it's like, ah, like, damn it. Like, okay, I, I'm not as defined. And then There's I still a line there. There is There's still but, lines. But there. then I, I step on the scale and I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm not even at 185. Like, what am I going to do now? So like, I remember, uh, Alberto Nunez had mentioned it. He was just like, yeah, you know, smaller guys, they want to bulk, they want to bulk. But as soon as the definition goes, they freak out and they go the other way. And then they say, oh, I can't bulk, like, cause I'm not, you know, whatever, I'm not capable, whatever the case. But like, that is definitely the struggle for me. Like, yeah. I'm just trying to maintain and I'm like, ah, I'm having a hard time already. <laughs> yeah, you might have to wear like a little fat suit for a little while. Yeah, yeah, which I'm not happy about. And uh, <laughs> yeah, your face might change a little bit, might puff up a bit, and you're gonna have people ask questions, you know, like, oh man, I thought you had abs. <laughs> Oh, uh, dude, like you normally, you know, some people will say say something, not even know that they're yeah totally crushing your I, spirit. <laughs> I got touched in the gym in my midsection by a friend. I had no hard feelings whatsoever, but he was like, oh, what's going on down? Like, oh. huh? And I was just like, oh, you know, I'm just trying to maintain 185. Oh. And he meant nothing by it, you know, just because, <laughs> like, I don't really see the, the team at mm -hmm. the end of the day anymore like I used to. But like that, I'd be lying if I said that didn't stick with me. I'm just like, ah. but you know, I'm still. I'm You're still over gonna... in the corner doing sit-ups. Yeah, yeah, right. Like 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 a thousand calories a day. But no, I'm I'm sticking with it. But it's just like little things like that will occur, and I'm just like, oh, am I doing the right thing? Like maybe I should switch it up. But just gonna keep pushing forward. You gotta stick to your guns, and you gotta recognize like just you know when you're you're in a moment you know you're in, in a time frame you're gonna bulk for 12 weeks or you're gonna mm -hmm. bulk for eight weeks or whatever it is you're gonna be back out of that soon and you're gonna be working on you got to remember that you have decided that this is a good idea for you and you got to figure out a way i see a lot of people though they they switch you know they flip-flop back and forth they're on um which flip-flopping back and forth is fine if you do it for x amount of weeks but if you're doing it like every other day, you're like trying, you know, this diet, and then you try this diet, and you try, you're not really building any real consistency. I think one of the better diets out there that I see for bulking that has a lot of good information, just on um, perf being performance based, um, being able to lift heavy, and being able to put out good volume every single day, along with staying lean, is Stan Efferding's Vertical Diet. Yeah, I think there's a lot of great information in there. Um, but I, again, I see, I see just so many people when they, they make this jump to do a bulk, a lot of times they're, uh, leaving just other things behind like conditioning. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're just kind of, I guess, forgetting about, uh, the overall goal. And sometimes you just, uh, people just have a hard time sticking it out because yeah, you are going to gain a little bit of fluff. Mm -hmm. But this is the thing too. You, you mentioned like bulk eight weeks, twelve weeks. This is the thing you got to get. Like I, most people shouldn't be thinking about that in such a short period of time. Because if you're thinking, oh, I want to gain this in eight weeks or twelve weeks, you're literally going to put on a lot of weight, and a lot of that weight is going to be body fat, mm. right? Like if you're really trying to gain muscle over time, right? There's not like uh, you're not trying to get ready for a show, or whatever. This is going to be something that you should aim like. Okay, I'm going to be on this gaining phase for maybe the next year or two because mm. like if you're really trying to put on muscle it's going to take you a while it's going to take yeah. you continuing to improve at whatever right. movements you're doing in the gym and if you're just focused on eating a lot of food right you should be eating to slowly gain but if you do it too fast then it's the the quicker you gain the quicker you're going to have to go on a cut because you put on too much body fat and then you're going to realize oh maybe i didn't really put on that much muscle mm. during this bulk because i gained too much weight too quickly so a a, a good idea is like you know for, like, for example, Andrew, it, mm -hmm. we're looking at somebody in Andrew's situation. The whole audience knows what Andrew looks like. It's a good idea for him to perform within this weight range. He's been lifting mm -hmm. for a few years now, so he has a good base. So for now, it's great if he can stay within the range of 180 to 190. 
and just stay continuing to perform well in the gym there because his body is going to slowly change within that range, right? Mm -hmm. If you're someone totally new, the initial aspect of your first few years of training, you're going to see a lot of just new muscle gain. But there's going to be a point where you're going to get to a certain weight and that's going to be kind of where your body's going to chill for a little bit. And you should just focus on performing, whether it's your you, you, you perform really well at 170 to 180, 180 to 190, 200 to 10. You need to perform there for a little bit and your body will have a recomp. That's like a Brian Bajura or whatever. Um, he, we've been staying at just like around 200. And yeah, he, when you're bigger, you'll lift bigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And, and then your body, you know, your body's going to respond to those bigger weights that you're lifting. So if you are 200 versus 180, you're going to be able to lift a little bit more weight. If you stay there for a while, um, which you should stay there for a while, then that's going to have a training effect that's going to help you build even more mass and help you build even more strength. So even when you go back down to losing some weight, your central nervous system will still be on board with lifting some of those weights. You might lose some strength, but every time that you, uh, every time you come back down, you should have a little bit more muscle and you should have a little bit more strength. You should be able to carry some of that with you. Mm -hmm. And then every time you bulk back up, you should be a little bit leaner as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. Like if you, let's say that you are a man and you're at 15% body fat at 180 pounds. Okay. What I would tell you to do if you've been lifting for a few years is stay there for eight months, stay there for six to eight months, eight within, months, stay there for six to eight months, okay. stay within that weight range for six to eight months, because in about probably six to eight months, you're going to be within that range and you'll probably be 11 to potentially 12% body fat. And then if you want to, you can move into the next zone. You can literally just like start slowly looking for the scale to purposely go up to 190, 195. And you'll probably again be at like 14, 15% body fat around like maybe 190 to 200 or something. Stay there for a few months. I'm, I'm really glad you, you mentioned six to eight months because I, I, for myself, I'm, I am curious, like how long do I have to kind of be here in this weird like... Um... I don't, uh, I'll say like cotton limbo. It's like a limbo. Yeah. And where, it, where I'm trying to like, I don't know what to, like, do I keep going this way or do I try to switch it up or how long do I just have to sit here in this weird spot? And I don't think this is an easy idea to market to people either because it, <laughs> yeah. it's not because when no. you're not seeing the scale go up and you're not seeing the scale really go down and you're only focused on moving more training volume in the gym and improving there, mm -hmm. it can get kind of monotonous. But after six months, you're going to notice you're, you're substantially leaner at the same weight. Mm. And then you can move, you can push it up. But now you, instead of being that weight, you'll now be with it like 195, 200. But now that's, that's your 15% body fat. Mm -hmm. And then you stay there for another yeah. six months. I'd also say that it's hard to continue to get in better shape uh, if, you don't, if you don't have a great structure. Like if you already have a great structure then you might be able to do what Ensema has done where you have an individual who's already big, already has some mass, um, introduces some more exercise through something like jujitsu, uh, introduces some different practices in the diet and voila, you know, you're down, down uh, quite a bit of a percentage in body fat. It won't look the same, you know, if somebody doesn't have the muscle mass That's or the true. structure. Yeah. And so you want to go out there and get that muscle mass and get that structure for a bunch of different reasons. But a huge reason being just that you can eat a lot more. You know, if you are, you're going to kind of perpetually drive down uh, the amount of calories your body needs every day if you are always kind of dieting and if you are, oh, if you're under eating and you're um, just a lot smaller, you're not allowing your body to like gain. I mean, we've seen this with uh, MMA athletes. Sometimes they go up like a weight class. They try to just go up one weight class and boom, their body explodes mm -hmm. and they go up two weight classes. And everyone's like, what the, what happened to this guy? How do you get so big and so jacked? And a lot of times it's just because they were kind of suppressed uh, in that for a long time. So that's what happened to me in soccer when I was mm -hmm. younger. Like when I stopped playing soccer and I was able to just focus on lifting, the weight just started coming because mm -hmm. I was literally, my weight was staying down because I was doing so much fucking cardio while I was lifting. Yeah. So much running. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like we've been kind of advising and talking to men is there anything different for f the females that are my, the, all three of them that are listening no then i mean honestly i wouldn't i wouldn't i would personally not say there is mm -hmm. because it's the same idea like you want to get to a certain body fat for women and maybe be around 23 to 25 percent 23 percent body fat 
and you want to hold that for a little bit and you want to like get you want to recombat that um and like if you stay at the same weight uh and you perform there for a while and you you continuously and this is the thing this is why i've we're both focusing on increasing your performance meaning you're increasing your training volume in the gym you're increasing your work capacity you're getting stronger if you can increase your performance at the same weight your body composition will change positively if you're not eating in a massive surplus of calories so that's why in this stage either you're eating at maintenance caloric intake or so, like somewhere very close to your maintenance um because you can still gain muscle there you can if you're if you're focusing on performance in the gym okay if you're, if you're getting weaker that's not a good sign. That shows right. that you're not doing something well. You're not eating enough. You're not sleeping enough for your performance. It makes a difference. A lot of women kind of think um, that some of the lifting that they see guys do isn't for them, but we know differently. I mean, we've seen we've seen some women, especially recently, they're ripping up some crazy, crazy weights. Oh, Jesus, yeah. And it seems to be empowering and inspiring for a lot of women to... Uh, flip tires and to lift kettlebells and to do things that you just didn't really see that many women doing that previously, uh, especially like with uh, CrossFit coming around, a lot of women doing Olympic lifting. Um, and these girls are really, really fucking strong. So oh, I think yeah. I think you can have a lot of goals surrounding. Uh, yeah, I'd love to be able to one day flip that, that tire that I see in the gym. You know, I know a lot of gyms have... Uh, access to some of these strongman pieces of equipment they got sleds and uh hammers and all kinds of different things that the gyms didn't have previously and you can work on just uh saying yeah i'd love to be or for a woman it could be as simple as i'd love to be able to do a couple pull-ups or be able mm -hmm. to do a couple push-ups because i know for some women they sometimes struggle with their strength in their upper body and that could be an amazing goal and when you're actually able to do that uh then you're like super pumped and super excited and so You'll be excited by the fact that your performance has changed so much and you'll be less uh, maybe concerned or worried that there was some weight gain on the scale. Yeah, exactly. It's, I, I think for everyone, you should just try to find a sport that, that you enjoy. But um, if you're a new lifter listening to this, I don't know, Mark, what's your suggestion? Because we, we talked about this before, and when new lifters start training, you know, they want to immediately get into powerlifting, right? But we've talked about building a base before you just jump into that in terms of competition. But how do you feel about that? Because you, you jumped into powerlifting immediately. Yeah, uh, powerlifting, you know, for me was, uh, was a sport, you know, so it was like it wasn't any different than uh, a young kid you know, playing soccer or anything else. It's mm -hmm. just something that I got introduced to very young, at a very young age. Um, looking back at it, I think, I think that it's probably more productive to start out in bodybuilding and to start out with um, kind of just uh, messing around kind of training, like just like going in the gym and like just, messing around on the machines and doing kind of what Andre Milanichev shared with us. Because the reason why I say that is that the more muscle mass that you have, uh, the better leverages that you have. And you can get better leverages by also getting kind of fat or getting chubby. Um, those things can be helpful, but uh, you're better off with it being muscle mass uh, in the long run because it's just going to give you, I guess, more strength, give you more longevity. There was many, many years where I didn't really look like I lifted um, I mean, I, I looked, I guess I looked fit. Um, I looked like I was in shape, but my arms were pretty, like I was pretty like thin because powerlifting while lifting heavier weights can assist you in getting bigger. Uh, the main focus of powerlifting is not really hypertrophy. So I didn't have a ton going on with the legs. I didn't have a ton going on with the arms. Um, until later in life, until I was like, you know, and when I say later in life, I mean like 18, 19, but that was five or six years, uh, into training already. What I would advise people that are newer to do is, um, to really hone in on the diet, on the nutrition, not like the gym stuff. Like hopefully you get inspired and you get your ass in the gym. I, you know, I really hope that that is something that you do, but I don't know how much the program matters. Uh, I think if you just engage in some of the basics, um, a lot of the movements that we've known forever, they, they all work really well. And even if you mess around on the machines, those are all good practices as well. 
But where I see most people slipping up is most people don't ever really get a hold of their diet. And we know a lot of people that train that uh, still don't have a physique that they're pumped about or proud of simply because they never really got a hold of their nutrition. Mm -hmm. When it comes to bulking, what can be hard is to try to add in calories and can be really difficult for people. They can feel uncomfortable trying to add in more and more and more food, but that's something that you do over time. Again, referring to Stan Efferding, when he talked about training with Flex Wheeler, a lot of his stuff was, you know, the, the, the training mattered. He trained like twice a day, yeah. but so much, of the, so much was reliant upon the food. He'd wake up and he would eat. He would, he would uh, before he'd train, he would have, you know, a smaller meal. Then he would go and train. Then he'd have a post-workout meal. And then he'd go lift again. And then he would eat again. And it got to the point where he started eating five times a day. Then he started eating six times a day. Then he started eating seven times a day. And then he started eating eight times a day. As that progressed upward, it sounds like a crazy amount of eating, but those these were small meals that Flex Wheeler got him used to. Stan Efferding is the ectomorph of all ectomorphs. He is. He's just a naturally very thin guy. I think he said he graduated high school like 130 pounds or something like yeah. that. And he's fairly tall. So um, he was very, very thin. But the way that he got bigger was through a lot of these things that he was doing uh, with Flex Wheeler. And they, uh, Stan started out with four ounces of steak and like a half a cup of rice at each, at each one of these meals. Those are kind of small meals, especially for a guy, you know, at Stan's size at that point, he was probably 270 or something, you know? Um, and then they added two ounces of steak like every other week. They added a little bit of rice every other week. And by the time he started uh, getting in full swing, he's eating 14 ounces of steak eight times a day with with a, like two, a cup and a half of rice every single time. Jesus. I mean, Stan's just like, yeah, my jaw fucking hurt at the end of the day, <laughs> chewing on that much steak and stuff like that. So, right. You see how Stan Everdeen got, how big he got. It's yeah. Like, you want to get big. I mean, there's going to be some sacrifices. Most of the people that we hear from that, that say they can't get big, they're people that don't even eat breakfast. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you can't, you're out drinking all night. You're not getting any sleep, mm -hmm. you know, and you're, uh, and you're also missing breakfast, like get out of here. Don't even ask me any more questions. I know we talk about fasting a lot and I know that's what we do. Okay. So it's funny. Cause like we will, we'll, we, there's a lot of things we talk about and some people are like, but hey, don't you guys fast and eat one meal? Okay. Listen, <laughs> if you are trying to get bigger and you're not eating enough food, it's probably not the best idea for you to try to condense all the food you're supposed to eat into a four to five hour window like we do. Because listen, we can eat a lot of food in four to five hours, <laughs> okay? And if, if you find it too difficult to do that to hit your calories, spread your meals out more so you can get the food you need to get in, right? That's the big deal here. So if you, if you need to eat throughout the day, there is no problem with eating meals throughout the day if that's the easiest way for you to eat enough food to grow. You see, like when I eat, I'm still eating enough food that I'm making progress. I'm still eating a lot of calories. So keep that in mind as we talk about all of this and as you hear us talk about episodes where we speak on fasting, remember that. You eat like two pounds of meat every day, you think, or more? I don't even look at it in terms of poundage because like the meals that I have that are packaged, there's the, cal the, the, the protein on that. So like it'll have like 80 or something grams of protein. And then it'll usually be like seven eggs or five to seven eggs and then maybe one to two steaks, and I've definitely had two to three protein things in that day. So that's an upwards of 230, mm -hmm. 240 grams of protein. And then there's the fat that's added to all of that stuff too. So I get in that within the four hour period, or if it's through the day, then it's through the day, but it's always enough. What fat do you add in anything in particular? Butter, I'll oil, use butter. anything I'll, like that? I'll use butter. Um, I don't really use oil or anything. Um, Sometimes if I, if I choose to put my steak on the pan, I might use a little bit of oil, but I don't do that that often. Um, egg yolks, uh, I, when I do choose to eat fattier cuts of meat, there's gonna be quite a bit of fat in there. And I'll sometimes still have pork belly and stuff here, here and there, so. Yeah. Avocado, anything like that? I don't really fuck with avocado. No, no, no fruit, no vegetable diet. Avocado's like, you know, it just, it's cool, but it's like somebody ate it before me. Yeah, no, it's weird. So I'm not it's all mushy. Biggest fan. But it's healthy for you. Like mm -hmm. if if somebody would put it in front of me, I wouldn't be opposed to eating it. Right. But um it's not my first line of <laughs> action. Uh I wanted to mention something 
real quick because I saw this quote from Squat University. And it was cool, but I also kind of disagreed with it slightly. And he, he put this post up and it says, if you want to look big, bigger, train muscles. If you want to move bigger weights, train movements. Bodybuilding is different than powerlifting or weightlifting. Purely strengthening a muscle doesn't teach you to move well with it. And I agree with that statement. I really do agree with it. But I feel like it's, it's, it's like, okay, yeah, just because you bodybuild and that's your focus, if you don't train your squat or deadlift or whatever or snatch or whatever, that doesn't mean you'll just go to those movements and you'll be able to move well with the muscle that you have on your frame. Mm -hmm. But if you do these things concurrently, if you're a weightlifter who has bodybuilder accessory movements, if you're a powerlifter who has bodybuilder accessory movements, while you're doing your main movements, while you are now progressing your training volume with these bodybuilder movements and these muscles are getting bigger, but then you once again go and you use these muscles to do the movements that you're doing. So these bigger muscles are now being taught how to do these movements. Uh, same thing with jujitsu. If you're a jujitsu athlete who trains in the gym at bodybuilding, and then you go back to the mats and you use that new muscle on the mats, you will be able to move that muscle better with what you're doing. So the only place where I kind of disagree with this slightly is I get it conceptually just because you're a bodybuilder doesn't mean you're automatically going to be good at this because you train those muscles but doing these together you can look like a bodybuilder while doing any of these mm -hmm. things when you look at top level weightlifters like a lot of the like yeah. the Chinese ones and stuff they look like bodybuilders mm -hmm. they're jacked yeah and then another part I, I'll disagree with that um, statement is I mean a, a muscle that starts to develop in size cannot be weaker it's, if it gets bigger, that muscle is going to be stronger. And if you're going to be stronger, then you are definitely going to be able to move, you know, whatever, the, the yeah, barbell, whatever direction. It's definitely stronger at some capacity doing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah like, no, it absolutely isn't. But I also do agree that, like, if you don't put it into practice, which more of what you're saying is if you don't do them at the same time, then, yeah, you might kind of forget how to squat correctly because you're not getting the reps in there, it's like yeah. using everything together that's the big thing about like a power lift it's yeah. using your whole like every all your mm -hmm. leverages to move this load on your back mm -hmm. right um and just because you really big doesn't mean your body knows how to work together to do that but if you train that with that body you'll have a higher capacity right. to be able to do more of that I'm all for movement and everything, but, you know, when I was going through powerlifting, you know, people weren't applauding people because of the way they moved. Mm -hmm. They were applauding people because of the weight they lifted. Mm -hmm. And when I competed, I recall, like, you know, being in the warm-up room and having, like, you know, lifting, like, the bar and then lifting, like, a plate and lifting, like, two plates, looking way worse than probably almost every single person there mm -hmm. with my own form and technique. When it came to like going onto the platform and performing it the way that you needed to do it, mm -hmm. I usually blew people away. So it, it's powerlifting, you know, and sometimes building these strengths in like one capacity can kind of leave you, you know, in a position where you're maybe not as strong in some other areas. But as Nsema pointed out, if you are still paying attention to all these things concurrently, which I wasn't, I didn't even feel like, I didn't feel like I had the time for it. Maybe I did, but I spent a lot of hours lifting really heavy weights, so I, I, I wouldn't know. It, but it probably would have been uh, something that would have probably assisted me to even be stronger had I had a little bit more flexibility, had I had a little bit of that. But like, that's the way, that's the only way that I knew at that point. Uh, so for some people, like I think, I think it's important for people to, uh, you know, want to be good at multiple things. But if you, if you want to be great at one thing then you're going to have to kind of sink everything you have into it. And you're going to, in my opinion, I think sometimes you got to leave some other shit behind. So if you're going to try to bulk and get big, uh, you might look fat. Your stomach might hurt quite a bit. You might be farting up a storm. <laughs> like there's just like things that you might shit three, four times a day. I mean, there's, there's going to, it's going to be a change for you mm -hmm. and certainly be a change, especially in the beginning um when you're the first couple days and weeks that you're doing that but over time hopefully you can probably uh get used to that and hopefully over time you can uh kind of feel good inside the you know bigger body that you made and then you can work back again on uh cutting up again mm -hmm. i think that's a good place mm -hmm. that's yeah. a show Take us on out of here, Andrew. All righty. Again, 8sleep.com slash Uh Huge thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode. Um, 
I mean, we talked about performance, all that good stuff. You're not going to perform, um, you know, optimally unless you get optimal sleep, fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer and wake up feeling way more rested to tackle the day. Uh, eight sleep.com slash power project. You'll automatically receive $150 off your pod pro mattress or mattress cover, uh, links to them down in the, the description, as well as the podcast show notes, follow the podcast at Mark Bell's power project on Instagram at MB Power Project on TikTok and Twitter. And again, if you guys uh, have any more questions in regards to like clean bulking, bulking or, or recomping, make sure you leave them down in the description below or in, down in the comment section below. And we'll try to attack those on a future episode or maybe we'll just chat back and forth down in the, uh, the comment section. Uh, follow me at I am Andrew Z on Instagram and Twitter and at the Andrew Z on TikTok. Jean-Claude Van Daddy, where you at? <laughs> Thank you, Zaddy. And Sima <laughs> Inyang on Instagram and YouTube. And Sima Yin Yang on TikTok and Twitter. Marquise. Everybody, we got Ben Patrick's going to be here. Bam, 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 bam. I think it's October 24th is the day. He's going to be doing a seminar. And I don't think he's ever even done a seminar before. This is going to be the first one. Yeah, it's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy. It really is going to be crazy, guys. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't ready. It's going to be a rager. Yeah, it's going to be sick. <laughs> We're also working on getting C.T. Fletcher here. Still working on the exact uh, date of that, but uh, <laughs> we're going to be having some seminars here at Super Training Gym again. And uh, y'all are invited, but I'll, I'll give you more details uh, as uh, as we get closer. I don't know how many people we're going to be able to stuff into here. Yeah, mm. but probably start booking your hotel rooms now because when they find out, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, fuck, they're having a seminar, all the prices are going to go up. Mm -hmm. That's going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never weakness. Weakness never strength. Catch y'all later. <laughs>